Welcome back everybody to another Helm to Tower video. Let's continue with our final here video for Wayfinder on builds. I've been showing off different setup I had for every character in these videos and I have the final two characters here for you in this one. This is gonna be going over Kairos and Silo. Now in my kind of intro to building and setup, I uh, played Kairos in that video and gave an overview uh, of building but I'm gonna go a little bit more like I've been doing in previous videos in depth with some of the setups I have here for the Kairos I have now. I've made a couple adjustments, nothing major though. So if you watch that video, you'll be a little bit familiar with this Kairos setup I have, uh, but I'm also gonna go over Silo as well up there. I think both these characters excel really in like ability, or like kind of ability spam, I guess you could say, and also like crowd control, at least how I have them set up right now. Um, they can just do a lot of damage and are really effective uh, and in kind of managing that stuff and also like outputting a lot of damage. So they can be pretty effective all arounders, I could say, you could say in terms of like doing a pretty good damage to bosses if you're in a boss hunt, but also like, you know, taking on a lot of crowds of enemies and clearing stuff fast. So let's get into it. First up again, I have Kairos. As you can see, it's still somewhat similar to a setup I have in there, but I switched out these weapons for Umbros. And the reason I did that is because, you know, if you know Kairos' abilities, Again, it is that loop of uh, getting the Siphon Radiant going to get those arcane fragments. Those are the little purple orbs that circle Kairos. The more you have of those, the more rakes you have at any given time. And as you use rakes, you can see they're pretty powerful. You can combo them when you level them up max here. As you can see, you can get the more powerful version of it. And it also heals you as well, which is uh, very useful for Kairos for just doing really big damage and getting big healing as well. And then also I built in the Siphon Radiant again for that kind of AOE. And from there, you know, I, I upgraded this a little bit, like from there, like these don't need too much uh, upgrading I found cause they already are just, you know, they are kind of one time use. I found they're kind of like a fire and forget sort of moves that you can just kind of hit really quick and do a lot of damage, especially his ultimate here um, can just do a, a big chunk of damage, especially on like boss enemies and stuff. And can be good for that. Um, I went for, I went for daggers again, because you can, because you also get arcane fragments from uh, doing, as you can see, a landing combo finishers, and that can be pretty. in with daggers, you're they're just faster. That so you can get uh, your arcane fragments pretty quickly through this as well. So I had pretty. I have a quite fun with setup with this, and I'm using the Umbros daggers because I like the ability a lot. And while using it in combat, if you've not seen these daggers in in action before, but you basically do like a big AOE slice kind of around your character. And you know, it's uh, it does a lot, pretty good damage and uh, uh, can be pretty good for also um, clearing out groups of enemies and hitting a bunch of enemies at once. Uh, so I really like that setup uh, with Kairos. Again, talents, um, I pretty much always have been going into this Havoc, especially a lot for these arcane characters um, or arcanist characters, I should say, not the, not the arcane uh, Netflix show, but our arcanist as the, the class of characters, which is uh, Nis. Kairos and Laura in this game because innovation orbs, getting these orbs like reduces thing. You can do things like reducing your cool ability cooldown, which is good to have. Cause like I said, using our, uh, using your rakes a lot on Kairos is really good. You know, using abilities gives you chances to make orbs on top of that. So you can feed into getting your abilities faster by using abilities. And then of course, overwhelming Arcana uh, gives you that uh, kind of free damage uh, stack of buff to do more damage with your abilities. And they can just hit really hard. And, you know, and again, for all this stuff, I just kind of built into things that complement that for your for your echoes, for the armor set. I just picked pieces that kind of complement that stuff. And then what else we have? Affinity perks, again, is similar to that. I built into focus because this is going to be upgrading. You can see I can I mix uh mix it so I can hold more arcane fragments, so I'm gonna move up to five. So you're gonna have even more of those rakes going. And then you can also have uh, more chances to make innervation orbs. So, which is pretty nice. Or you get you get arcane fragments from our uh, our innervation orbs as well, which I'm making a lot of already from the, the other abilities and things I mentioned. So last year again, you know, I use this as well to do that. You can increase the damage you dealt. Where well, you have arcane fragments, and you can also decrease the damage uh, after using arcane fragments. So just you know some survivability options. But I'm mostly building towards this because as you can see. Uh, while you have maximum arcane fragments, Savage Rake reduces the cooldown time of your other abilities by 20%. So that means you can basically stack up to the max arcane fragments you have, which is five, and then start throwing rakes out 
and get your abilities back super quick through that. And uh, that that's what I wanted to try out because I thought it'd be pretty fun because I'm, as you see, once I get into the gameplay, again, I showed it off a little bit in that previous video. You can get your frag, you can get your um, breaks back pretty fast and be using them a bunch. Uh, lastly, again, I have this collapsing shadow set. Again, this set comes from doing the triple shadow imbuements. That's, I know it's not the most fun modifier that in the game, but this is a pretty good set because it gives you max health, resilience, and ability power all together in one setup. Um, and I like that just to give Kairos, you know, a little bit more health, a little bit more survivability in the setup because now that I'm uh, daggers and being in your in the face with Kairos, uh, it's, it's a lot more fun. Uh, so let me show off this like slightly different setup I have with Kairos now. It's pretty similar to the previous video, but I still thought I would show it off uh, regardless. So I've gone a little bit through this dungeon here. As you can see, I got this uh, this relics uh, event here in this zone. So I thought actually taking on this little uh, boss event here would be a good showcase for what's uh, some stuff you can do with this Cairo setup I have now. Uh, so let's get into this. Let's start this here. Uh, the big thing with Kairos is, the, you know, again, the Siphon Radiant. Try and, I always try and use that right out the gate because then you can see I, ha I had seven rakes total at the start there. And now I can just start going to town. This, you know, gives me arcane, our arcanist orbs, our innervation orbs, a uh, bunch of different verbs there. But, you know, those give you those little blue orbs you can see popping out that bust my ability damage. And now I can just kind of keep going to town with this thing. You can see every single one gets hit. And now by the time I have been doing those, I literally have them back and uh, have the Siphon Radiant back as well. And I can just keep doing it as well. So I'm just going to keep. I can literally just keep spamming them and it's a pretty, pretty good setup there. And you know, but the daggers I like because you know, they can, you know, they're quick and hard hitting and I can just kind of finish them off. So let me get this worm guy. Thanks for giving me some rakes. I'm going to take it out now. Let's take on this boss now. It's going to do this crazy laser move. That's fine. Get out of the way of that. Let's go ahead and pop that on him. Some damage going here. Use my uh, abilities. You can see that was my weapon ability. It's pretty hard. And then I stunned him, hit him with an ultimate. Boom. There's like, you know, 75% of his health gone. And then I can do a couple rakes as well. Boom. Easy. Uh, you can just chunk big damage with this setup with your abilities uh, with Kairos. And it feels really good to do. Just kind of get that loop going. Pop the ultimate, pop the pop the weapon ability, just get a bunch of damage on bosses at once, and just clearing out adds super easy because I can just kind of loop that siphon rating ability to give me a bunch of rakes, and then keep uh, getting my health back as well from those rakes as well. Um, so that's pretty fun. One last thing I wanted to do. This is sort of like is a little extra bonus because uh, it's something you might not have known about in this event room. Is there's a secret uh, door with a chest behind it. So you can go, if you go in here, you can see this little puzzle I found. Uh, it's easy to hit him room, but no relics. Uh, what you want to do is just get the, it's kind of like the the puzzle and repository where you want to get the whole, all of those lit up and see once you do that, uh, it's always hidden behind this uh, kind of hidden wall there, secret wall, Dark Souls style wall there. Uh, but if you jump down, you can see, I'm going to go back out the room the way I came. You can kind of already see those orbs over there glowing because I lit up this room. It's leading me back there. Um, and then boom, look, there's a chest back there. Go grab easy chest for doing that little event there on the side. You know, and I know that some people may have mi oh, missed that. I know for what took me a while myself to figure that out, but hey, I thought it was just a fun bonus. I was already here. So why not show it off and showing off that Cairo setup I have. So you can see this one's pretty fun as well. You know, it's, it can feel pretty interchangeable because you again, if you watch that last video, I used his uh, epitaph staff, which is kind of more of his signature weapon, and that works totally fine with this setup as well. But daggers can be pretty fun too because they're a little faster. You can be a little more nimble with uh, your attack combos and things like that. And Umbros daggers in particular have a pretty strong ability there that she can do for some big damage. Uh, but let me go over now to Silo with my setup I have there uh, to show off for you. All right, let's talk about Silo. Last but not certainly, certainly least here, Silo has a lot of really effective stuff in terms of his abilities. His abilities are really potent in the way, like I would say, he's very like 
there's definitely a lot of similarities to Venomous of how I have at least sub Silo and how he can play because you know they're both survivalists. They both are like characters that I think are really good, more so with uh, gun, gun, uh, what the gun weapon type rather than some of the other weapons in the game. You can definitely make things like daggers and even like maybe like swords or shields, whatever. Try and work with these characters, but I think they excel the best with guns and uh, in particular. So for Silo. In a similar sense, I kind of built up uh, a couple of his abilities here. Uh, mainly, you know, he has this fire bomb and this uh, oil bomb ability. I think these are both really good in a similar way where um, Venomous applies poison, has damage over time. These fire bombs are kind of similar in that they will apply fire to a full, uh, like a burn damage to enemies and they'll do damage over time. And then oil bomb also, you can see it leaves an oil slick on the ground. If enemies are in it, they get trapped. But you can also throw the fire bombs on them to make like a big kind of AOE explosion, which also does some pretty good damage as well, and also applies burn to enemies for more damage over time. So again, in that same vein of like you want to build into ability power, but also like crit power because you're doing a bunch of damage over time, and then you know hitting crits through those damage over times to to kind of really rack up a lot of fast damage. You can do that pretty well with Silo. Um, Silas' other ability, he makes this kind of clone, like decoy that you can put down and, and stagger enemies. I think this makes him really great for like, if you're somebody who likes to play solo in particular, this can be really useful in those scenarios. You can just drop one of these enemies, will just kind of go to it, and you can drop his, you know, his oil bomb and fire bombs on that, or his ultimate ability, which makes the big, uh, you know, kind of, it kind of makes these big AOE orbital lasers come down, which is pretty cool. And you know, you can just kind of trap enemies in those things and big, big crowds and do a lot of damage to just a big crowd of enemies, uh, which is pretty fun. So that's kind of the setup I went for. You can see I kind of upgraded his oil uh, enemies. So that makes it easier for them to be critical hit when you've, when you've oiled them up. <laughs> that's a weird thing to say, but you know, that's what, it's true. <laughs> And then of course, you know, I've increasing the burst, the burn damage and other things like that. And then you can see when they uh, die from that burn damage, they also detonate for that last level uh, uh, there as well. So that's, that's pretty cool. I like that as well. And then um, I went with Tempest as the uh, weapon of choice because it is, you know, it's a very early uh, game, weapon you can get in the game. And I'd argue it's still one of the best kind of shotguns and weapons in general in the game just because it hits really hard and its ability lets you literally just do like a, a dump of all your ammo at once and it can just do a lot of damage and then you know I didn't even have to like my break power you can see is right under 3k but even with even with that like this thing just chunks their guard meter so you can break enemies super easily with that and just then pop that uh, ability and just do a ton of damage with it for uh, affinity perks I'm going into these two trees because again you can see this go kind of builds into doing a lot of crit damage uh, with Kyra, or not Kyra, but Silo. Um, you can see I did um, I increase the, the crit damage here to debuff targets, obviously, because I'm throwing the oil bombs on enemies, throwing the fire on them, either be oiled or burning. So they're going to be taking all that damage, but also now they're going to be taking potentially even more crit damage as well uh, with this. And you can see, uh, you know, when, when I'm hitting basic attacks, so, you know, I'm just kind of naturally shooting enemies, uh, it, it'll increase, uh, it'll reduce my cooldown uh, for that as well. And then eventually I'm gonna be doing this. You can see I do an additional, uh, it has an additional uh, crit chance to enemies when they're debuffed on top of everything else. So that's pretty good. And you can see this is when I do basic hits on debuff targets. It charges that super a little bit faster and also um, it increases the damage bonus of strategic advantage by additional 10%. That is Silo's passive. That makes it so you know you can deal 10 bonus to melee and range standard shot damage to enemies that are debuffed. So again, that just builds into the, that that um, how much more damage you can do when you're debuffing targets and using your abilities. Uh, for talent tree, I went way into tactics because of the the different exposed weakness stuff you can have there. You can see when it spoke, exposed weakness is now stronger. Um, I'm, I might try something else here be honest because I might I might try and actually go into this crit rating because I think that I'm hitting a lot of crits with silo um, and then you can uh, use that uh, more potently so honestly I might switch this real quick and try that out uh, and see how that goes because I'm I don't think I'm using ex exposed weakness as much here um, on silo as I think I am and I think crit could be way more effective so I'll do that real quick so yeah jumping ahead here's my kind of final product here I just went all into this crit damage 
uh, side rather than what I had exposed weakness before. So you can see my crit rating and crit uh, increased by quite a bit there, uh, switching that over there. So want to give this a shot. I think it'll just be more effective as you can see from the build, can you, and as, you, as you heard from going over abilities and talents, I'm doing a lot of critting and uh, debuffing on targets with my abilities. So that's gonna make that crit stuff even more potent. Uh, once again, I got a similar bug to last time with Senja. Oh, let's see if I can get that to do that again. I, I had a teleporting silo there for a second. But anyway, uh, let me jump into uh, a, a battle here and show how, let's see, let's see how effective this setup is now. Right, so I'm jumping into another boss hunt, the Renegade, one of the new bosses added it in the Crucible Zone. It's one of the late game bosses. I jumped in the ones particular because I only forgot briefly, but here I am showing it. I did get the accessories from this boss. They are the Plague Bearer set. So you can see the Plague Bearer Viscera and Fang come from defeating this boss and have a chance to drop. And then the Plague Bearer Band is what you craft for that. So you can see again, that's building into crit rating, max health for a little more survivability and crit power. That's how I have so much health on Silo. I think it could just, you know, just be helpful for that. Uh, so let's take on this boss, shall we? And uh, show, see what this setup can do now that I have a lot more crit battle or a lot more crit power. So gonna start off with this. You can see I put down my effect here. Let's just start dumping the shotguns. Like I'm hitting tons of crits already. That's pretty good. Let's throw this on here. So you can see he's taking burn damage, hitting for tons of crits, doing some good damage here already. This is pretty cool. Hitting a lot, lot of crits for sure. Just gonna chill here for a second. I'm gonna hit that spot there. Let's throw some burn damage on. Keep charging. You can see I broke him as well with uh, Tempest, which is pretty good. Extend a bunch of tiny rats. Go ahead and throw my bombs on there. You can see just really good for effective crowd control with uh, that stuff for sure. And then, you know, I can just kind of hurl my hurl my bombs when needed at the boss to kind of get on some extra damage. Pop my clone. He's still stunned by the clone. Throw that on because he's going to do this. Little rat move. I'm going to get out of the way of it. That goes underground. Throw that on him. Pop my ult because why not? Again, just get this whole crowd of enemies with this rat going and you know you can see I'm dump a little bit of my ability in there as well and we're gonna finish them off here with all those crit damage so there you go pretty effective setup with Kairos you can see I was doing get a ton a ton of yellow uh, numbers through the damage over time I got a plague bear fangs so you can see there that's where it drops from and I got um, you know just doing damage over time with the fire and slowing with that and using the decoy to kind of distract the boss I'll just dumping into him with uh, Tempest and building up that ability, which is really potent on Tempest to just dump in a bunch of damage with that shotgun. So again, really, really fun setup here with Kairos that I like, uh, and he can be pretty good. And this, you can see it was pretty effective in both scenarios, right? Where the bunch of those rats were coming at me and I could use the, the bombs to kind of slow them and throw fire damage on them and kind of just, you know, do a little bit of crowd control as well. So great setup, I really enjoy. But 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 that's 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 it. This is it. This is it. That was kind of everything I have to show for you for now with Wayfinder and some of these setups I have. Um, I definitely want to experiment with more builds in the future, but I'm kind of going to probably wait and see honestly what the future of the game holds. You know, if they plan on doing more different content for the game. And I know they they did announce they're going to be adding the nightmare mode in sometime later this month, which is uh, going to be pretty fun. And of course, the games have come to Xbox as well, which is all exciting, but you know, there, there might, I'm going to see if they have any more plans, uh, next year for more content for the game or not. We're just going to have to wait and see. I want to see what modding and mod support brings to the game. I think that will now be early next year. So there is at least one thing to look forward to next year, uh, for the game. So I'm curious what that'll bring. Like if that brings something like if people are able to figure out loadouts and things like that, I would love that because that would definitely make it a lot easier to make builds and things for characters for future videos, uh, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. For now though, um, future other videos I'm probably gonna do in the future, we'll probably be covering some other games, uh, like I think I've mentioned in pre previous videos. <clears throat> I'm gonna be catching up on some stuff and also some newly released stuff that is coming out pretty soon. Uh, Marvel Rivals was a game I didn't think I was gonna check out because I'm not a big PVP guy, but you know what? I might just do it. It may be just do like a simple impressions 
hey, here's what here's some some thoughts from a uh, a casual PvP player, video game player, um, but also was a, a big fan of Overwatch when it first came out and kind of fell off that uh, after a lot of this weird stuff that game has gone through. Um, so I'm curious about Marvel Rivals. So I'm going to check that out. Path of Exile 2 is out pretty soon here as well. It's going to be an early access. Um, I admittedly did not play Path of Exile 1 or Path of, Path of Exile really at all, but I might give it a shot because it looks interesting. And, you know, I'm, I've been becoming more and more a fan of like action RPGs thanks to ga this game and some other games I've played in the past. So I'm going to do that. And, you know, those are like some of the bigger ones, but I'm going to check out some smaller stuff as well in similar vein to, to Wayfinder here. Like I picked up this game called Linked, which is really cool, which is more like it's more like a roguelite, but also has a lot of action RPG influences in it because you're like kind of running dungeons. You're like building out like a like a town area, almost Animal Crossing of uh, Stardew Valley style where you're building out a little town and that gives you different things in the game and you can like co-op with friends. And also I love some of the visuals are very reminiscent of uh, uh, old school fantasy star online, which I was quite a fan of uh, way, way, way back in the day. So might might do some stuff on that as well. Uh, just to give you an idea of uh, what's probably going to be for the rest of this year. Yeah, I'm probably going to fit it around the holidays and all that other stuff going on. So, you know, I don't know if it'll be like a regular cadence, but, you know, it'll hopefully it'll be a little bit more frequent uh, more recently. But, you know, regardless, though, if you just stop by the channel just because you were looking for the Wayfinder content I have here, I still appreciate it. But I do hope you maybe check out some future videos of different games or just let me know maybe down in the comments if you'd like me to cover other games. Um, just uh, let me know and uh, maybe I'll look into that stuff and, and check it out in, here on the channel. But, you know, thanks always uh, for checking out the Wayfinder videos again I've done recently. Feel free to leave a like or comment below or subscribe to the channel if you want. Uh, but yeah, greatly appreciate it. I hope, I hope these helped you get uh, more familiar with all the different characters in Wayfinder and how to build them out and stuff like that. And I had a lot of fun making these. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.